So we're celebrating at this service the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. It's been 500 years since we came back to a simple message of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The Reformation gave us freedom of religion for a while, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. And you think after 500 years, we should be so much better. But it's looking like 500 years later, what Jesus said about our age is coming to pass. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. You would think with, with the Reformation, this would not be a possibility anymore, that Christians can be deceived. We've got more than the printing press. We've got the internet. We've got so much information. You think everybody knows the truths of the Bible, the gospel, the Holy Spirit, and healing, and faith, and, but they don't. Many people still go to the churches and are almost in as much darkness as the dark ages. 80% of Christians are not even reading their Bibles every day. 80% of Christians, I think it's even higher actually, have not even finished reading the entire Bible. That's amazing, isn't it? We're 500 years later. Is God going to extend this grace? Are we going to see the end of grace and the age of tribulation, the age of the millennium when Jesus comes back? Or are we going to be given a little bit more grace? I'm not sure. I think America's in a seven-year cycle right now. I told you that with the solar eclipse that started in August 2017, and it's going to be repeated the other way, making an X across America in 2024. Looks to me like a seven-year cycle, marked out by heavenly bodies, not something that man has any control over. So we've got, it seems to me, another window of opportunity. How long does it last for us? The forces of evil really are uh, at work. Jesus says that there's going to be global deception. Certain thoughts, words, and books were not allowed under the Nazi regime of Germany, under the Roman Empire, under currently North Korea. It is a crime to possess the Bible, to share what is in the Bible with other North Koreans. Do you think all these people who hate the Bible, you're on the same side as Kim Jong-un. What spirit motivates you? Can you even assess your spirituality by recognizing what team you're on? It was not allowed by Antiochus Epiphanes IV. This is the, the precursor of the Antichrist, the Syrian ruler who went and defiled the temple just before Jesus came, 400 years before Jesus came. Uh, for him, you know, circumcision was prohibited. We now have, you know, progressives, uh, left-wing forces that are trying to prohibit circumcision in the Western world. Of course, they'll never be able to stop it among the Muslims. I don't think they can stop it among the Jews, but a lot of Christians have abdicated this already. Possession of the Bible or the Torah was a crime punishable by death under the Syrian empire of Antiochus Epiphanes. And you read all this stuff and you think, how, how can the people let this happen? How can such wicked rulers control masses and masses of people? The people just rose up that have no power. But again and again it happened. You would think that this happens only under dictatorships of old. You would think that this could never happen to us. But I have uh, some news for you. The internet book burning has begun. And for our ministry, we were hearing about censorship all over the internet, and we have finally become one of its victims. YouTube has now started censoring our videos. So they do it with word games. They don't just shut you down right away. They don't say, we are against freedom of speech, because that would be against the First Amendment. So their new rule is, you are advertiser unfriendly. Therefore, you can't be monetized. You might not be recommended. You might not be able to have you know, a thumbs up. You won't be suggested. So these are ways that they control you. And a lot of people who are producing uh, Christian or conservative commentaries, they actually live by it. This is their full-time job. For me, it's not full-time, but it's an important part of the ministry. But for those who are full-time, literally they open their computer and their income went to... Whew. 
Imagine if that happened to you. You're doing the same job, providing the same goods and services. People like what you do. They come for what you do, and suddenly you can't make a living. Reminds me of what the Bible says in the book of Revelation. In the end, they will finally come and control us through our purse, through money. A lot of Christians don't understand what Revelation is saying, so I want to give you a real example. We have been demonetized for what? What is so bad? What is so wicked about what we share? Because, you know, ISIS propaganda remains. Things about abortion remains. Fake news and lies that are biased towards the left remains. So what is so bad about what we're saying? Well, here's a video that YouTube demonetized. You can see all the yellow signs there that means demonetize, demonetize, demonetize. You don't want to wake up and see your account full of yellow. And that's what's happened to our account. So is Donald Trump Christian? Is Donald Trump Christian? Anybody offended by that? Made a video. 28 minutes. Is Donald Trump Christian? We provide evidence. We provide facts. Not advertiser-friendly is the label they give you to censor you. Right? The truth about Trump's Muslim immigration ban. Well, this now, the U.S. Supreme Court sides with me on this video. We had a lot of Democrats stirring, uh, activist judges trying to be a blockade, be a roadblock to President Trump's executive power. And I talked about the facts and demonetized the truth about Roe v. Wade. How about that? You can put up disgusting propaganda to kill babies, but we can't examine the legal facts of a historic court case which has been misused to justify the murder of more than 50 million human beings in one country alone. What else has been demonetized? I talked about Bible codes concerning Benjamin Netanyahu, not advertiser-friendly. Okay? My dream about Hillary Clinton, not advertiser-friendly. I had a conversation about God with a yoga instructor. You'd think that that would be allowed. Not advertiser-friendly. I show people how to evangelize and talk to people who might not share our faith. How about this? How controversial is this? To follow God's plan, you must know Satan uses good things to deceive you. Demonetize, not advertiser friendly. I have a conversation about an expert in Bible codes, and he looked up and he saw my name and my wife's name crisscross in the Bible code. How amazing is that? Anybody offended by that? Demonetize. Not advertiser friendly. Oh, God, God would be demonetized, you know, if he lived here on this earth, right? He would not be advertiser friendly. How about this video? The U.S. Declaration of Independence. Demonetize. Okay, so talking about the most important piece of document that founded America is not advertiser friendly. I'd hate to show you what they consider advertiser-friendly. Anything with left-wing bias is okay with them. So I've now joined uh, the ranks of Paul Joseph Watson, who's made this video where he looks like he's been gagged and can't speak. And this is the antichrist tactic to control free speech. No buying, no selling without our approval. Now, right now, it's just ad advertiser-unfriendly. Yeah, but one day there will be a mark. There will be a stamp of approval that says, now and only now, under our authority, you can transact financially. But you can see this is beginning to happen. Mark Dice, again, no freedom of speech. He's been gagged. How about this? You think you couldn't touch somebody who had the highest rated show on cable news, Bill O'Reilly. He's a Catholic, has conservative views, often pro-Christian, interviewed a lot of Christians and pastors. When they don't like your message, but the people do, they strangle you financially. They just fired him. They made up sexual allegations. This is how they can just destroy people these days. It doesn't have to be proven in court yet. And he lost his job. But you know, he's going to come back because he's got power, he's got money, and he's going to fight these people. And you know what? God's going to use someone like him. You should pray for people like that. Pray for people like me. We're at the, the edge, the tip of the, of the spear.
pushing through the darkness, saying things that they don't approve. We know they don't approve what we're sharing. But they haven't gotten to the point yet where they can do away with the First Amendment, which is the protection of freedom of speech. In America, you're very blessed to have that. Other countries, like Australia, we have it implied, but it's not actually set in stone. With one wrong government, one wrong leader, all that could be taken away. So the mainstream media, I would say without exaggeration, is part of the beast system of Revelation 13. What do I mean? Well, let's take a look at it. Revelation 13 says, when the beast comes, then he may be here right now. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Remember, it's an image, no longer an idol, an image. What do kids look at? Images. What's at the palm of your hand? Images. Even while you're watching me right now, you're watching images. And the devil will corrupt that and give a counterfeit. This image causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So what does the Antichrist do? He comes to restrict your commerce. He comes to restrict your business. You get that? Okay, this is important. A lot of Christians don't get that. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Let me ask you a question. Who restricts buying or selling, God or the devil? Wait, wait, wait. See, people got confused for a moment. Who is against buying and selling, God or the devil? The devil. And yet you got all these Christian freeloaders, sponges, who take but never give. And they complain if any ministry, if any Christian conduct any business and it's not for free. So which side are you aligned with? Who restricts buying and selling? God or the devil? Just answer that question and things will become clear to you. Napoleon Hill, which I'm sure many listeners have read, he interviewed more than 500 millionaires. They would be billionaires of our time. He was friends with Andrew Carnegie and many of the Christian uh, you know, wealthy persons of his time. And he re- wrote a book, Think and Grow Rich, which is probably the number one um, motivational financial success book in the English language. There would be nothing even close. And he said this, quote, No intelligent person will either request or expect another to work without adequate compensation. Now, compensation for him is not always money. But anyone that is working, anyone that is producing good things, including ministers, missionaries, Christian musicians, Christian artists, they deserve to be compensated. And God likes it. God wants to encourage that you be honestly paid for honest work. That's God's way. And the devil's way is to restrict that freedom. The freedom to offer something good and others say, that's worth something to me. I want to pay for that or I want to pay it forward. I've already received it. I want to pay it forward. And the spirit of Antichrist is so prevalent that people don't get this. We have 180,000 subscribers. Almost none of them ever give back. I love you and I thank you that you trust me and you come and you listen and learn, and you leave good comments. But the Bible says in Galatians 6, verse 6, that you ought to communicate or contribute to the ministry of someone that teaches you the Word of God. Look that up, Galatians 6, verse 6. I don't expect everyone out of 180,000 to be supporters. Some of them may be fake, maybe they're onlookers, right? But a great percentage are real, genuine Christians. And if each of them just gave like $1 a day, even less than a dollar a day, less than $30 a month. This ministry could fulfill everything that we've been talking about, taking on social media, for one. Costs a lot of money. Google got seed money, $25 million. 
The two guys who started Google started with $25 million. That's how they are what they are today. We don't need that much, but certainly there are people listening who are stewards of God's money, and they're spending it on themselves. Money is not for your own consumption. You wouldn't have the ability to get wealth without God. That's God's money. That's God's business. And He doesn't want it all, but He wants at least 10%. When you're wealthy, you should have a financial plan to include giving. I want to challenge Christians that because we talk about revival today, the Protestant Reformation. Do you know that it's a consistent story that every revival dies when the giving stops? What do you think pays for Bibles? Your money pays for Bibles. What do you think pays for churches? Your money pays for churches. So we're not focused on money, but we also don't treat it like, oh, materialism is bad or material things or money is bad. No, it's neutral. It's how you use it. Let me continue. Have you heard of Russell uh, Conwell? This man was a Civil War hero, spoke to Abraham Lincoln face to face, met Robert E. Lee, and became the president of Temple University in Philadelphia. And he has a great book called Acres of Diamonds. And he said, quote, There are some overpious Christian people who think If you take any profit on anything you sell, that you are an unrighteous man. On the contrary, you would be criminal to sell goods for less than they cost. Isn't that true? If you're in the business of selling things for less than they cost, you're stealing from somebody. You're a thief. That is not viable. It is a righteous thing to get honest pay for honest work. We ought to encourage that. We ought to encourage Christians. Get off government dole. Get off it. You don't need to depend on it. Live a life of faith. Work. Do something for God. Amen? Amen. If you can't work, some people say, well, I'm disabled, I'm past the age, then work for God. Volunteer. Come to the church office. Do something. Go to outreach. Start an outreach. Amen? Life is so short. And and, and your worth is not measured by your net worth. It's not measured by what you own minus all your expenses and liabilities. Your net worth is calculated based on one word, permanence. Anything that is is not permanent is worthless. Everything we pursue that has no permanence, why are we even wasting our breath? Life is so short, right? Everything we do for the gospel, everything we do that reaches another soul, teaches people the word of God, disciples them into servanthood, into following Jesus in ministry, this is eternal. This is what we invest in. Amen? A lot of you lost so much money investing in the stock market, investing in business. 2008 came. Man, I've met so many people in America. 2008 wiped them out. Imagine if you'd just taken a portion of those millions of dollars and invested it in a gospel preaching, you know, missions uh, practicing ministry. Your investment is recorded permanently. It will bear fruit permanently. He further said, Russell Conwell, this is what I just said. I got it from him. Money printed your Bible, money builds your churches, money sends your missionaries, and money pays your preachers. And you would not have many of them either if you did not pay them. Fact is, there are some corrupt preachers who enrich themselves with money, but God will judge them. And you do see some of them get judged, some in this life, some in the next life. It's not your business. Don't worry about it. You give with a sincere heart, you have an investment in heaven. But the fact is, there are a lot of sincere, pure-hearted, faithful ministers who gave up riches and wealth and opportunities in the secular world to be here and feed you. And if they don't get paid, there are lots of other opportunities, aren't there? And it's sad that we, you know, the world celebrates the Christian mus- musicians, sometimes more than the Christians. So guys that were like, you know, Gospel choir singers, Whitney Houston, Elvis Presley, 
These guys got their training in, in church. And we didn't recognize the gift. We didn't compensate the gift. And so they used the gift for the world. And the world ate it up, loved them, abused them, used them, and then destroyed them. There's no permanence in that. Yeah, you got fame for a bit. You got money for a bit. But if you sell your soul just for wealth and fame, it's not worth it. So there are good people, lots of good people in the church serving God. And uh, they deserve to be compensated. Amen? So don't look upon people and say, oh, why do they have this? Why do they have that? Imagine the CEOs out there. Lots of them got private jets, nice cars. Nobody questions. It's amazing. If they're secular, nobody questions. If they're Christian, you know, I don't personally need a private jet, but I'm not going to criticize somebody who has a private jet. I don't have their ministry. I don't have their life. I don't have their schedule. Who knows what they need? Let them run their own business. You know, the world has enough sense. If you run a company, you don't go and try to criticize. Well, we, my competitor does it this way. My competitor overspends on this. Well, let your competitor do whatever he wants to do. Right? Literally, this is none of my business. Mind your own business and do it well and succeed. That's what we're rooting for. We want you to be a success. We want you to have a great business, whatever it is. Do it really well. Be the best. And leave to God the rest. So we're going to come back to more and more of this kind of teaching to prepare the church. Because there, there are errors in both sides. This is the incomplete reformation that we have. We need prosperous Christians. But we don't need money-loving preachers. Or money-loving Christians. You need to know. You need to know everything you have comes from God. The Bible asks, what, did you, what do you have that you did not receive? So why do you act like you didn't re receive it from the hand of the Lord? You are not the owner. You are a steward. And the sooner you find out about that and understand that and believe that, the better you will manage your money and your destiny. We stuff up, we foil the plan of God because we think we own it. My business, my money. No, it's not. It's God. Without God, you couldn't even spell your name. Be honest about it. Without God, you're a musician. Without God, you couldn't play two chords next to each other. Without God, you can't even remember what you did yesterday. And if you need a mind to make good decisions in business, you need to acknowledge that you depend on God. Amen? Amen. But for the grace of God, it'd be finished for any one of us. So we're going to have to steward everything we have better and better because we now see the signs have come, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, the, the confirmations are here. We're in the zone now to fully advance the purposes of the kingdom. We're going to see the biggest harvest of souls in our lifetime. God is not looking for a few to wander into church but they're going to be storming us. They're going to be finding us on the internet and in social media and on YouTube as long as they don't completely shut us down. We've got to get ready. And there's imbalance on both sides. There's imbalance among the prosperity preachers, but there's imbalance among the prosperity preacher critics. So easy to criticize. I, I, I read ministers criticize, oh, the, the TV evangelists, oh, the preachers on TV. You know, why don't you pick a, a target your size? It's easy to target someone when they're so visible. Is it, have you walked their shoes? Do you have their budget? Do you have their problems to solve? We don't. Let's just do our business. Amen? Let's not fall to, to either side. And if you think you're justified and you're called to be the judge, you, you'll learn that's not true. There's only one judge, it's Jesus Right? And if there's judgment, God says, keep it within the church. And the internet ain't the church. Right? Internet is public. People just misinterpret things just to justify their own nature. They have a critical nature or a judgmental nature. They just want to do that. So I say all that to say something practical. Right? We produce things, resources, to equip the body of Christ. And I hope you enjoy them. And I hope you get them. 
Uh, you can always just support ministries without receiving anything. But I think honest pay for honest work is a good motto. So uh, you'll be happy to know the End Time Conference that we put up recently uh, is now available on video, and we put together three of what we thought were the best sessions from Singapore and Melbourne. We put them all into one package. So you'll have the sign of Jonah explained and the, this cycle, the seven-year cycle from 2017 to 2024, uh, targeting the U.S., explain. You'll learn how Jews and Christians interpret end times signs differently and how to survive the fiery book burning of the digital age. We're going to talk about reinventing social media for the glory of Jesus Christ. You can't expect to evangelize the whole world and ignore social media. And most Christian ministries really do it poorly. So we want to do something new and help not just us but all the body of Christ. All right, something fun that we came up with, and this happened during the conference, so we thought, okay, we'll revive it. We did something fun. We made ministry mugs. So a lot of you got these mugs. The people who are watching don't know about it. This one is, uh, says, make church great again. So we're just going to test it out and see how many of the people watching us on the Internet uh, might like to have a mug that has Donald Trump and me next to each other. And we don't want to make America great again. We want to make church great again. And we want to complete the Reformation. The good things that were started, we acknowledge that. But God is still moving today. All right, so it's a nicely designed mug. Uh, our people who were present in the conference liked it. It sold out. So we're going to make it available. And the shipping is really cheap. I know shipping has been an issue for buying books and DVDs. But we got a special price for shipping just these merchandise. So let's see how people respond. You go to discover.org.au. Again, you don't like mugs, don't send us criticism and say, why are you making mugs? No, we're still preaching the gospel, okay? But some people have to use mugs. If you don't have to use mugs, then up to you. But if you use a mug, why are you paying Starbucks? Why are you paying Walmart or wherever you shop over there in America? Why don't you do, have something that you're going to use and then you're also supporting in a fun way a ministry that you love. Amen? All right, another thing that we've done, we've gotten so many emails, hundreds, literally, people saying the divine code is out of print and on Amazon people are pawning it off. I think eBay or Amazon, they're pawning it off for more than $300. Please understand, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm not getting that money. Okay, that's not, got nothing to do with me. Somebody's got copies and they're selling it off. Now, we found a box. Hallelujah. We found, we told everybody it's out of print and we're trying to reprint it. I need prayer. I need more time to do all this writing. It takes a lot of time to write books and, and revise it. But uh, we found a box and there's 60 books that are available and we're going to put it back up on the internet. And when 60 sells, that's it again. Okay? That's it again until we reprint. So we're going to make it a kind of a fundraiser. Right? We'll set a price above the average but not what eBay and Amazon is doing. Something reasonable. Have fun. It's a way to support, and you can get the last copies of this book if you wish. If not, don't leave any negative comments. Just keep it to yourself. Amen? All right, and one more thing that we're doing in response to popular demand. People have been asking. We have to wait for shipping. We have to pay for shipping. Again, let me explain to viewers, watchers, we don't control Australia Post. We live on an island. This is what happens. We live on an island. We send stuff out of here. It always costs. It's true for every single organization, business, ministry, church in this country. Our shipping does cost a lot. We have no control. So people are saying, why don't you digitize it? Since people have asked so much, we're going to release some new digital uh, resources. So we've now got uh, how faith really works on MP4, the message of grace, MP4, answers to free thinkers. People ask what's good for unbelievers, skeptics, atheists. This series was really good, answers to free thinkers. Where is God during personal tragedies? How many people blame God when somebody dies in an accident, somebody dies in a crime? Well, why didn't God feed the hungry? Why didn't God stop the whatever war? Okay, well, we take that on. We're not afraid of questions. Are you afraid of the answers? If you're not, then get it and listen. Watch. We've got uh, some of the end times on there. Not, not all of it. Now, I want to say, in contrast to what we're doing, evil is very well funded. 
this man. He's called the man who broke the Bank of England because he made one billion dollars in one day of trading. He short sold the British pound. He nearly broke the Bank of England. This man is completely anti-Christ, anti-family, and he takes the billions that he makes and funds riots and left-wing agenda and abortion and the whole mass immigration that most people are scratching their head and saying, well, look at the crime. Look at what's happening. Why isn't anybody speaking common sense? He's funding these agendas. Recently, he's given $18 billion to the open society. Now, this is the society that's not open at all. It's very closed. You can't join it. The open society funds Antifa, anti-Trump riots, even Black Lives Matters appears in Australia, and it's like, what's that got to do with our culture? Well, these people are paid, and they've done some protests. Did you guys see in the city? I was there. I saw it. How did they get here? Somebody funds that. Now, as much as we don't like him, you can't fault him for one thing. The man's committed. Any man puts $18 billion into a cause, he's committed to that cause succeeding. And my question is, how many of the millionaires listening to me even give a fraction of what George Soros is able to give? And give it to a ministry that's not just feeding the poor. Thank God you feed the poor, but isn't it Jesus who said, don't be afraid of those who kill the body, be afraid of him who can destroy the body and the soul and send it both to hell. There's something eternal that we need to do, not just social work. We need to fund the gospel. We need to get the message out. We need to clean up social media. There's so much filth, so much pollution that is entering the young generation. And nearly all of the Christian ministries that are trying to do something, they're just not succeeding in this area. But we are. We are. Let's capitalize on that. Let's make a platform from that and do more for Jesus. You know, it's a sad fact that most Christians give less to God than they spend on dog food. If you've got a pet, you calculate how much you've spent on your pet. And I bet you, in the majority of the time, you've spent more on dog food than on God. And for those who are ladies, many Christian ladies spend far more on cosmetics than they give to God. I mean, you just match that up. You think, well, why, why are we, why seemingly Hollywood is winning? George Soros is winning. I know he's not winning. I know money is not everything because there's a spiritual component. There's a faith component. There's a prayer component. I got that. But the man is committed to pushing an anti-God, anti-family, anti-Christian agenda, and he backs it up with much of what he's got. Can I appeal to Christian millionaires and billionaires to back it up? Back it up. Find a Christian ministry worth backing, and let's do something revolutionary. Amen? And let's not do it for ourselves. We're not going to enrich ourselves. We're not, not going to line our pockets. So invest in the kingdom, right? We're on a good path right now. Last scripture I'm going to give you, James chapter 5, verse 3. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, James is. And remember, Martin Luther didn't like James very much, so listen to him. He's the half-brother of Jesus, the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. So technically, he would be the first pope, by the way, not Peter, because Peter had to listen to him. James said, chapter 5, verse 3, Your gold and silver is cankered. That's King James for rusted. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and you shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped up tre you have heaped treasure together for the last days. This is one of those scriptures that makes people believe, and I believe, that there is going to be an end-time transfer of wealth from the unjust system, the antichrist system, to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ. Somebody's going to have to get prosperous in the kingdom of God who's not going to abuse it. Somebody has to have a pure heart to go all out for God and not try to get name, fame, recognition, or extra opulence for themselves. And I believe now is the end time. 
and it's going to happen. Some of you listening to me are going to come by wealth in the hundreds of millions. And I want you to remember, God gave it to you, and it's His money. And you need to apportion, you need to allocate a significant amount, which means more than 10%, towards supporting the work of God in your living days and after your death. You must put your will in God's will. You must put God's will in your will. Amen? It, it, you should support, you should back up what, with your, even with your death what you have professed in your life. Don't deny what you've been confessing in your life after your death. We believe in supporting the gospel all the way, and we can leave a mark of permanence we can do something permanent in this life, and that's the only worth that we have. That's the only thing that counts, is making a permanent mark. We do that investing in souls in the gospel. But I'm believing out of 180,000 subscribers, some will think that we're worth at least a dollar a day. Think about that. You would spend more on a cup of coffee, on cosmetics and dog food. Are we worth a dollar a day to you? If we are, we need just 5 to 10% of the viewers to give monthly, and we would immediately be able to challenge the Antichrist system in many ways. Amen?